Okay, so where am I now? I can't see a training ground or a stadium anywhere near here. Look to the right. Look to the left. No, no, don't turn off. Wait, you have come to the right place. This is my new Football Manager series and I'm Michelinio FM. This is not a poor Geo Guesser stream. I just need to find the arena. Oh, maybe I can go down here and there's a few people I can ask. That restaurant looks okay. Uh, excuse me. Uh, excuse me. Do you know where I can find the uh, Bromo? Okay, no. Hmm. Why couldn't I have been picked up? Take the bus, they said. Walk from the bus stop. It'll be fun, they said. I have no idea where the stadium is. Let's go ahead here and see. Maybe this is exactly what to expect from a wealthy Stockholm suburb. Trees, introvert people and houses, but no stadium as far as the eye can see. Uh, how am I going to turn this club around and get them from the Swedish third tier to the Champions League? I cannot even find the arena. Forests and houses everywhere I look. Okay. What if I go down there? Is there a field up ahead there? Let's move a bit quicker to see what actually is there. <laughs> I'm struggling to think that this is the best academy in Scandinavia. I'm even struggling to see if there's an academy at all. Wait, wait. That's pitches. Isn't that pitches? I see pitches. I must be on the right path. So this is the home of the best football academy in Scandinavia. At least we have a few pitches to train on. That's a good sign. But where's the actual arena? I'm having trouble thinking that San Siro or an equivalent of that is hiding here. But I've been told that the stadium is quite modest though. Takes seven and a half thousand people, but there's usually not more than 500 people there. I seem to be on the right track. That looks like a clubhouse. Let's go. Oh, Grimsta IP. We are getting close. Let's see here if we can see the actual stadium. I see a bit of green there. Let's go a little further to see if I can see through that gate. Parking lot. Good. Oh, there it is. I see a bit of a stand, I see a tent, and I see a pitch. No burger van though. Can I get through that fence? No, no, they won't let me in. Okay. Well, uh, I think I need to go back to the front door then. Okay, so here we go. Wish me luck. Okay, so here we are. Welcome to this great FM21 adventure with Michelinia FM, or a slightly younger version of Michelinia FM. We are not going to the first tier of Swedish football, not to the second, but the third tier, because there we find the club with maybe the best youth academy in all of Scandinavia, and that is EF Bromma Pojkana. Michelinia FM, the manager, looks like this. He has a Continental Sea license and used to be a professional footballer at national level. He has all the attributes in the right places, working with the youngsters, attacking football, determination, level of discipline and motivation. Everything we need to get the best out of our players. If Bromo Poikana hire FM. If Bromo Poikana have today confirmed the appointment of Michelinia FM as the class new manager, Eyebrows have been raised in the world of football at the appointment of a 27-year-old, 27-year-old, who has recently spent time away from club football, and he is sure to face plenty of questions when he faces the media for the first time at Grimsta Ipe. 
He has put pen to paper on a two-year deal worth £675, taking over from Sean Constable. So if Bromma Boygana literally translates into Bromma Boys from the Stockholm suburb of Bromma, they were founded in 1942. They have never managed to reach any sort of uh, success on the national level, even though they are the biggest academy in Sweden, maybe even in all of Scandinavia. They have a decently sized stadium, Gilliam Stadium, 7,500 capacity, but there are rarely more than a thousand people coming to watch the games. So uh, we are we are in for a great challenge of building the name and building fine, building financial stability and building uh, success on the field. As you see there, only been three lower tier trophies won. So loads of work to be done and I am so, so, so excited about this game. This is the first 11. Uh, I recognize a few names. Oglin, for example, and the captain, Gustav Sandberg Mangeson. This is the uh, club vision. Let's look at this. Work within wage budget. Doesn't everyone want that? Uh, promotion straight away. That's going to be tough. But they also want us to develop the best youth system in the country if we don't already have it. So uh, we will try to combine those things going forward. Let's see here. Players in last year contract. Oh, there's loads of them, including star player Philip Hagelund. We will need to make some tough decisions here to decide whether to keep older players or get rid of them. Uh, let's look at the actual squad, though. What are we dealing with? I have added two players uh, to this game. I, the first player we're going to look at first, he's called Yardel Kanga. I have added him because he is not 15 years old when the game came out. He turned 15 in December so I created him in the editor and this is what it looks like he is told to be one of the best Bromma Poikana youth academy players to come through in many years I added him and I also added uh, someone who is slightly an opposite of him and that is where is he towards the bottom of course Anders Bort uh, I signed him for his beautiful hair I signed him for the fact that he is now an under 17s coach for uh, BP or BP or Bromo Poikin in real life, and I signed him because I have a bit of history with him. If you watch my Hansa Rostock save, then you will recognize him. So, this is the actual team, they are filled with, filled with history, filled with great academy alumni, and they have some great facilities at least to get youth players in. Junior coaching is excellent and youth recruitment is exceptional. Those two are the most important ones to get good youth players coming in through your youth intakes. And if we look in the development center, we have some five star potential players. Andre Piconel, a keeper. He looks decent. Only 15 years old. Hopefully we can turn him into something special. We can also look at the second one, Nils Wallenberg. Looks decent as well. I'm not going to fall off my share, but a 16 with great potential. Hopefully, he can amount to something going forward. We'll have a few more that, but we will go through them in a later episode. Let's go back and look at the actual alumni from Bromma Poikana. Here we have them two legends, Pontus Jagerstrup, who sadly died a few years ago in his prime, and Anders Limpar, maybe the biggest year Bromma Poikana player ever. And he came back to the club as a player for his last few years. And he was also a youth coach there for a few seasons. We also have a few other names that you might recognize. John Guidetti, now 27 years old. He was, he was going to have a brilliant future, but he hasn't really amounted to that. But he's a BFA player. Albini Ekdal, former BFA player, now plays for Sampdoria. Really good. Imagine if we could bring one of these players back. Shell Jonevret, I'm going to show you him because he had quite a fun managerial career. Vestroska for Opera Jugo and Molde Viking, Orlando Pirates, and then back to Bromma Poikena. Uh, we also have Ola Danat, who was sort of the, the father of the academy. He left for rivals Jugo Gordon a few years ago to become their head of the youth department. Uh, we also have Bojan Jordic, he's not in the game, but you might recognize him from his Man United times. We have Marisia Albornoz, who also has a brother, uh, both BP players. 
and Pablo Pinones Arce. Maybe we can bring him in as a coach. Another very talented former player. Uh, it would be kind of cool if we could bring in a few of these. Maybe a former player, maybe maybe a coach. Uh, Daniel Majstorovic used to be director of football a few years ago. Actually had to leave uh, due to not the greatest of circumstances, but maybe we can bring him back. Ludwig Augustinsson, another player who is in his prime. We're not going to be able to bring him back for many years, but maybe he will come back towards the end of his career. And the brightest shining diamond from the from Apoikin Academy in the last few years, Dejan Kulusevski, who is currently at Juventus. He left from Apoikin in 2015, so he's been in Italy for quite a few years, but he is his one bright shining star, maybe the uh, future of Swedish football. And then we have this guy, who is actually in the team, Philip Hoglund. Not that talented anymore, but a very solid player, at least for the Swedish third tier. He might be the best player in the entire Swedish third tier. I think we'll have to rely heavily on him. And then we have this guy. I'm not really sure why he is a favoured personnel. Doesn't look that great. He's not that old. He hasn't done that many seasons for Bremont Poikana. So uh, I think maybe we'll need to get rid of him. The fans doesn't love when you get rid of favoured personnel. But on the other hand, there are not many fans to take care, to care about. This is the hierarchy. We have Gustav Sandberg Magnusson, who is sort of the archetype of a leader in the locker room and on the pitch. Look at this. From 2009, when he made his debut, he has been true to Ephraim Poikina, and hopefully he can help us climb the leagues. We also have Philip Hoglund, who I showed you just a little while ago. He looks really, really good for this level. The problem is that he's 32 and that he has an outgoing contract and maybe we will lose him. Hopefully he can do something great for us this season. We also have this guy, Jesper Davidson, who is used to uh, playing top tier football. It's even slightly older, still decent for this level. But I think we will have to rely on a few of these older players for the first season. Towards the end of this episode, we will actually get into a bit of a uh, strategy or a three year plan going forward. Uh, let's move on. Uh, look at the depth chart. This is what it looks like. We look solid when it comes to the central positions. Lacks a bit of wing backs that could be fixed, I hope. But if we instead look at potential, it sort of paints the similar picture. Seven central midfielders with great potential. That looks really promising. Uh, we also have a few decent central defenders. When it comes to balance, we have three million in the bank. But if we look at projections, we look like we are going to lose it going forward. So we need to think about how to keep how to keep the balance in the plus and not go into the red when it comes to staff this is what it looks like we are lacking staff members we have only two coaches we don't have any scouts uh, we will first of all look at the coaching staff to show you that there are no excellent staff in here uh, we might be getting really, really good players coming in through our youth intake, but we will need to improve on this if we are going to make great players out of them. This guy looks game created. Leonard Adolfsson, not too good. Peter Björklund, goalkeeping coach, he is decent. Palma Reinsson, fitness 16, he is also good. And then we have Joachim Varsame, who also looks game generated, looks awful. Okay, so we have a few guys that we need to, to replace going forward. If we uh, instead look at the uh, uh, recruitment team, I'm going to show you what they look like. Where are they there? Uh, Andreas Engelmark is both technical director and assistant manager. He's okay. Tommy Söderström, he scouts every young player in Stockholm in real life, and he does it on this game as well. Judging player ability, 14. Judging player potential, 15. We also have this guy. He looks very, very bad. And Alexander Hjedström, I'm not too fond of him either. So it looks like the game generated staff look awful, so we need to replace them going forward. So if we look at the staff for the under 19s, this is what they look like. We have three coaches. I have added one who I spoke of earlier, Anders Bot. But if we look at the coaches here, Erik Engberg is the manager. Nice man management, nice motivating. We also have Erik Rydian, looks okay. Jakob Schellgren, not fantastic. Sebastian Waldenström. And finally, Anders Bort, who actually looks maybe better as a coach than as a player. 
all of this kind of amounts to the fact that we don't have good enough facilities, good enough coaches, uh, but maybe the players are good enough. Uh, I'm going to cook this down into a strategy, an early strategy at first, and then look through the first three seasons as well. So this is what I'm thinking about the series going forward. I want us to become self-sufficient. And what I mean by that is I want us to use our exceptional youth recruitment together with a sc scouting focused on the Stockholm area. We are allowed to sign under 17 players, but only for the academy and only from the Stockholm area. I will show you that in a later episode regarding the, the scouting. Uh, we are also allowed to bring back former academy players. That's all the signings we're allowed to make. So we are not allowed to sign any players for the first team. But I want us to become self-sufficient enough to climb the leagues. But I also want us to survive financially. We have three million in the bank, which I showed you. But we are projected to lose two million per year, which means that we will most likely need to sell players. And we will need to gain promotion to increase our awful attendances to bring in a bit of money there as well. And then I think we need to increase our level of facilities as soon as possible. So maybe we will need to sell even more players to get money there. Uh, and if we go into season one, the expectations are for us to work within the wage budget, gain promotion by winning the league, which it's not impossible, but it's tough. But we also need to develop the best youth system in the country. So considering this uh, in squad building terms, I need to make some tough decisions whether to keep or sell the older players. Do we go with development or do we go with results? We probably need to go with results, otherwise we will get fired. I want us to stay in a positive balance, maybe cut wages or sell players. And then when it comes to player development, I want us to scout and sign local talents, create individual development plans, which I will get back to, which I will connect to an idea of a BP, which I'm going to call Bromo Poikana from now on, a BP DNA. And we also seriously need to improve coaching staff. We have a problem there because we are not allowed to search for them. We're only allowed to use the job center and put out ads. But we'll get back to that as well. Once we get through the first season, hopefully get promoted to the second tier. Uh, the expectations are to remain there and still continue to develop this youth system of ours. Uh, at this point, I think we will only extend contracts for key players or mentors. The older players who are not a key player or mentor will have to leave because remaining in the second tier is enough. We can start actually building, getting younger players in. But we will probably need to sell players to finance the facility upgrades and the better coaching staff, though, I think. We will see what sort of money a promotion would get us. And for the third season, the board wants us to remain in the second tier still. I still develop the best youth system, but here I think that we can start building a squad for a promotion push. Uh, get rid of the last of the older players. Our younger players have played for a few years, developed nicely. Uh, but I still want us to keep a positive balance, but try to start, start to try avoid selling players and actually focus on player development instead. I am so fantastically excited about this series. Where I will see if it's even possible to get a Swedish third tier team to the Champions League. Uh, I think it's going to be a really tough challenge, but I think it's going to be loads of fun because I get to do what I enjoy the most about FM and that is focus on youth development. So, you know, Sweden has one of the longest pre-seasons ever, but this is just ridiculous. Uh, because of COVID, we have a four month <laughs> gap now from our first game uh, until our first game of the league. Uh, so I think I will get in one or two episodes and quite a few friendlies before we play Yvko Berja in the first third tier game. Then we have a season which is quite packed with games, uh, but we're going to feel our way, see if we can slowly start developing this to see if we can take this club and go from boys to men. Thanks for watching.